15 минут, когда пройдет, где-то ближе к 18 минуту намекните, чтобы э, я закрыл наш разговор. Ладно, завершил. 20 минут мы должны быть. Максимум. If I forget any of the points, just feel free to <laughs> bring it up. Maybe not all of these questions at all. We'll just sure. Sure, sure. Uh, I guess when, if, when they pick the questions, they can show it to you. Assalamu alaikum. Hormatli khanimlar ve janablar, aziz yurttaşlar, yaşlar, bizim de hazır kudreti var ya kendi vatandaşlarımız. Varsa bizim Uzbekistan, Uzbekistan'daki Birleşke Milletler Vakilliğinin Facebook sahifası da kurup kurganızda mutlaka portalımız. Avval vada vergenizde, bu bugün Rejya'da gidik. Uzbekistan'da şu kullarda safarda bulup kurgan Cahayat Mahkanım. Vikramaniyan ki, yani Birleşke Milletler Tashkilatı Bağış Kartıbı'nın yaşlar masalları bu içe mağsus vakili bilen sıxbatımızın hazır manişu yerde başlayınız. Ve sıxbatta eskilatı bu tamamen. Siz hamıştırak için yetişin gizim mümkün. Canlı firdamız biz. Ve eğer sizden dünya yaşlarını siyasatı, dünyada yaşlarının oranı, oranın sadır bu ülkeden cüdü katta global zeryanlardaki iştirakı hakkındaki sağlarınızın Cahit Mahalli'nin gelir vakti olsanız, elbette biz gibi sağlarını yollaşıyoruz. Mümkün. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, dear friends, young people, our partners, donors, member states, whoever, wherever you are watching us live on Facebook, um, on UNIS Pakistan's Facebook page. It's a big pleasure for us to welcome Jayatma Vikramanyaki, the UN Secretary General's Special Envoy for Youth. Jayatma, very warm welcome to you to Uzbekistan. Thank you very much. It's such uh, a pleasure to be here. Thank you. So you've been here like since um, the day before yesterday. A long met, time. <laughs> <laughs> you've met so many people, young people, politicians, you've been to the parliament and the meetings you've had. What is the biggest thing you're taking home? I mean, it's uh, first of all, I want to thank the government of Uzbekistan um, for the very kind invitation that they um, gave me some time ago to visit Uzbekistan, especially in the context of the international conference that was held um, yesterday and the day before on understanding the role that young people play in preventing violent extremism, which I believe is a priority for the government and, of course, for us as young people as a whole. Um, so I've been here for two days. I've got the opportunity to meet with um, policymakers, the politicians. Um, I went to the parliament to meet with the parliamentary commission on youth. And of course, I met a large number of young people who are very active um, in, in both social and political lives. I think the, the thing that most impressed me was the, the values that young people carry here in Uzbekistan, the values of tolerance, coexistence. It doesn't really matter you know, which language you speak, where in the country you come from. Um, it really, they, they really present them as, as, as one Uzbekistani young people. I think that unity and that coexistence has really impressed me. Thank you. Uh, we, now we move to um, from the tip to the global agenda. Uh, when everyone, when you think of United Nations now, everyone, I think the world uh, thinks of sustainable development goals adopted in 2015. Right. And uh, I think that's when your office was uh, launched as well. But if you, if we think about um, young people and sustainable development goals, where do you see the role and the place? Uh, of us, the younger people, younger generation, um, in pushing for the achievement of sustainable development. Right. So um, I'll just also speak a little bit about like the history that yes. led to led to this process. I mean. 
Since a long time ago, um, youth organizations, young people, activists, civil society has been demanding for a bigger and a better space for young people within the UN system. So the former Secretary General Ban Ki-moon responded to this, this call of young people by establishing my office, the office of the Secretary General Sun Mo Yon Youth back in 2013. Um, 13, that's uh, Ahmed Al Hindavi was my predecessor um, and, and he played a key role in kind of driving the advocacy both within and outside the UN system to give, um, to, to understand and, and elevate the role uh, that young people can play in contributing to sustainable development. So with the leadership of my office and of course many other young people who are passionate about sustainable development and those each si single individual issues within sustainable development all came together and through the open working groups, through the My World Survey where millions of young people told world leaders uh, these are our priorities for development and and really consolidated those inputs to um, to build up what we today call the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. So we've played a role in shaping this agenda. We have told our policymakers, both nationally and internationally, this is what we want. And I think it's now really the time for us to be taken seriously as partners who will implement this agenda as well. You know, so for far too long we've been asking young people what are your issues what are your problems so we have now told our problems so then now let's work towards these issues but considering us as equal partners okay so uh, this is this is exciting times then i mean young people playing central part in sustainable development agenda but, but we have had some time now since yeah. the sustainable yeah. development agenda was adopted what do you think are the some of the biggest milestones we've achieved so far I mean, I think definitely in terms of, if you compare, um, I remember I was 10 years old when the, when the Millennium Development Goals were adopted, but it was really looked at as a agenda for the developing countries or those who need help or support. But I think the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development has really kicked off as an agenda that applies to everyone, everywhere, regardless of if we are coming from a developed country or a developing country, or you know, if you are a young person or an old person or a child, this agenda, at least some parts of this agenda applies to you. I was recently at the European Development Days where the Prime Minister of Norway, one of the most developed countries in the world, said, you know, we as European nations should not think that this agenda does not apply to us. For example, take goal number five, gender equality, we are still not able to achieve um, achieve equal pay, uh, equal representation in politics. So I think this agenda has really had an effect on policymakers in the sense that development is not only an issue for poor countries, but sustainable development is an issue for those rich and poor equal. And, and that realization has, I think, made people think of things differently. For an example, the recent development system reforms in the UN system, those who are familiar knows that achieving reforms is extremely difficult, but I think since we now understand that there is a shift in the dynamic in the way we address development, we, were man we managed to um, adopt these reforms which, which we are very hopeful will drive sustainable development on the ground. So these probably are some of the good milestones, but still I don't think we are, we are working fast enough to achieve it in 13 years. Thank you. I'd like to just remind again one more time for our viewers that we're live from you and Uzbekistan Facebook page and also from you and Uzbekistan Twitter page and feel free please to send your comments and questions and get in touch with us and uh, it doesn't matter if our live uh, um, chat will end at some point because the communication will continue. Definitely. You can keep in touch and continue sharing your thoughts and uh, questions to us. Um, Jayatma, going back to... Um, to young people and um, their role in sustainable development goal. You mentioned your participation in the international conference and the conference focused on the prevention of extremism, of young people getting into extremism. Right, right. Uh, you know, there are so many opportunities for young people to now get in charge and do things to create a better world, as well as threats yeah. uh, for them to, you know, to defer, to right. just to get distracted. Right. What do you think are uh, some of the things that we have to remember mm. to keep our young people mm. focused mm. on on the uh, 
the right side of things, on the safe side of things, so that they would uh, understand their role, their importance in, in, in keeping our world a safe right. place. Right. No, um, so you initially you asked me like what have been some of the milestones in, yes. in the youth agenda when it comes to sustainable development. And relating to this question, I want to talk about one such success we had back in 2015 uh, on the adoption of the Security Council Resolution 2250. Mm -hmm. um, I know that the mainstream media narrative or what we see on kind of on, a, on TV and radio and newspapers on a daily basis is really portraying young people um, as, as perpetrators of violence, you know, members of gangs or members of extremist groups or on the other side, for example, young women as victims of violence. Um, but the truth is that this is only a small minority of the, of the global youth population. This vast majority of young people actually love peace. They are peaceful. They will not resort to violent uh, measures. So the Security Council recognizing this positive role that young people play in 2015 really created a conversation about changing this narrative. And young people all over the world have been um, organizing themselves, trainings, workshops, networks, media campaigns, to really show that you know when we are empowered, when we are given the right opportunities, when we are included in the important decisions that are being made that affect our lives, we will not resort to violence. The extensive consultation process um, that led towards the progress study that was presented to the Security Council as a follow-up to this resolution explicitly recognizes two reasons why young people um, get attracted to extremist movements or, or resort to violence. The first, um, first idea that comes from young people themselves is that they do not feel included um, in informal political processes. You know, they feel like the decisions that affect their lives um, are, are made by other people and not by themselves. So they, they find alternative ways, ways of um, participating in, in, um, in processes, I would say. But um, the other thing is I think our systems have got so much bigger and monstrous for young, peop for young people to difficult to understand and we don't communicate very well with young people. That is a criticism I have towards almost all political institutions, including the United Nations, you know. Um, it's, uh, we have to speak in a language that young people understand. Uh, at the beginning, we referred to the sustainable development agenda as a UN sustainable development agenda, but that it is really the people's development agenda. We have to communicate it in that way so that young people have that ownership over this agenda that we are trying to drive. Um, so this, this inclusion of young people in, in political processes, in elections, in political parties, encouraging young people to run for office, and, and really giving them that voice they demand can prevent them from participating in violence and joining extremist groups. Thank you, thank you, Jyotma. Formatli, bizni to'g'ri shoh qilib turganlar, aziz yurtdoshlarimiz, tengdoshlarimiz, yana bir bor eslatib o'taman. Biz jonli firdamiz Birlashgan Millatlar Tashkilotining O'zbekiston milliy vakilligi Facebook sahifasida sizni qilib turgan savollar bo'lsa, mulohazalar bo'lsa, albatta bizga jonli tarzda yo'llashingiz mumkin va ishtirok etishingiz mumkin. So you met young people in Samarkand and uh, you were asking, I remember in one of our meetings, you were asking about the challenges that we, they thought they were facing in uh, becoming the full-fledged members of the societies. And you gave them recommendations as to how you think they can mm. push forward. Right. Um, if you can share some of the thoughts of that, and the impressions you had from the meeting. Of course. You know, what I really liked was in that meeting when we discussed the issues that young people raise the issue, but then also they come up with a, the, a solution to that issue, right? For an example, um, one of the issues that was raised was uh, that they find it difficult to find employment um, after they finish their studies. And the same young woman who raised this question said, well, that is because our education system is so outdated and our teachers are only um, teaching experts or pedagogues and we really need to be also taught by experts and professionals in that field to get those necessary skills that will help us to find employment. So I think 
while, the, while she highlighted the issue, she also brought a recommendation to how, how we can change things from as it is. Um, I think that is um, uh, an issue that young people in Uzbekistan faces, but also a global phenomenon. Currently, we have about 71 million young people unemployed across the world due to various reasons, but one of the biggest reasons is the, the kind of skill mismatch. Our education systems, our formal educational curriculums, not catering into the demands of the labor market or the changing, changing nature of um, no, nature of our labor markets. Um, a World Economic Forum report read that 35% of the skills that were relevant in 2015 will not be relevant in 2050, 2020, which is in five years. So, you know, our world is changing at such a rapid speed, uh, given the advancements of technology and you know even phenomena like climate change and we need to equip our young people with the skills and expertise that they will need to navigate these different complex dynamics um, and, and that definitely remains a challenge and an area that uh, we need more policy interventions. Um, access to quality education, again, um, uh, how we include, for an example, soft skills, uh, interpersonal skills, communication skills, conflict resolution skills, global citizenship education, where does all that fit in in our education systems um, is another important issue that they raised and of course something that we all need to work collectively to, to find solutions. I know, uh, Jared, thank you for your answers. I also know that you'll have a range of events and meetings you have lined up for the day. But my last question, mm -hmm. um, uh, while we're still having comments and feedback and questions coming from audiences, I know we'll continue taking them uh, well after this uh, live chat. If there's one message in a bottle that you could send to the young people in Uzbekistan and maybe beyond, what would that message be? Don't wait for an invitation. Never wait for an invitation to take initiative. When you see something, say something. When you see an issue, when you understand that issue, try to find a solution to that issue. Practice things, practice good things on your own, and then encourage your peers to take action. Encourage your peers to join on board. That's how big movements are built. That's how things change from the ordinary. Um, someone once said, Change happens when ordinary people take extraordinary action. So I encourage all of you to take extraordinary action for us to all be able to achieve the sustainable development goals. Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, Jasma Vikramaniaki, the UN Secretary General of Envoy on Youth. Jasma, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Bobby. It's a uh, pleasure. One more time, welcome to Uzbekistan. I hope um, you'll have a good the. Um, long-lasting memories from your trip to definitely I will as is left shunim bilan biz jonli fikrdagi muloqotimizni yakunlaymiz lekin eslatib o'tmoqchiman muloqotimiz jonli bo'lmagan tarzda ham davom etib etishi mumkin siz o'z savollaringizni muloqotlaringizni bizning sahifamizga yozib qoldirishni unutmang muloqotimiz davom etadi hozircha esa xayr salomat bo'ling